amen and amen. My sisters and brothers, it's good to be in the house of God one more time. God did not have to allow us to be here, but he did. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here. Just like our responsive reading declared, I will praise the Lord. The writer said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you. I know sometimes it seems like it's tough, but yet I find myself still rejoicing because let me tell you, it doesn't matter how bad the times get. Nothing diminish God from being who he is. That's why I praise him because of who he is. He's God. He is the only living God. My sisters and brothers, if you want to be safe and sound, you need to make sure that Jesus is your all in all. We come this morning giving glory, honor, and praise to our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Recognition to this church, to Facebook, as well as YouTube, and to all of our friends and families, to our officers and their families, to uh, also, all of our members that are represented here this morning and their families, as well as our ministers, both male and female, and our visitors as well, and also my sisters and brothers to Sister Newsom and Jeremiah. It's good to be in the house of God on this glorious occasion. Any time I can be in the house of God, it is a glorious occasion for me. I know that there were times when Israel was on their way to the worship and they had to pass through the valley of Becca. Sometime it would be sorry, but they would rejoice so much until they would make their valley a place of rejoicing. Simply because they were on their way to the house of God. And in that famous psalm, David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, not just temporary, but he said forever. And I want you to know I've joined the family of God and I'm going to rejoice forever in the house of God. My sisters and brothers, I want to invite you this morning to a passage in the book of Job. I want you to look with me at Job chapter 23 and let us read verses 8 through 10. Amen. Job chapter 23 Amen. beginning at verse 8. Amen. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Amen. Job chapter 23 verse 8 through verse 10. Amen. We find these words so written. Behold I go forward, but he is not there, and backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My sisters and brothers, you may be seated. I realize that we are in some tough times. But my sisters and brothers, there is a safe haven, even in tough times. 
And mind me now, therefore, we want to speak to you from the title, In the Hands of God. In the Hands of God. Job, and I'm going to give a quick synopsis and then I'll move forward. But Job said, look at here. Uh, he's going through some stuff and Eliphaz or uh, Eliphaz has, has blamed him. This is one of his three friends. Yes, Eliphaz has accused Job of not obeying the word of God. He has accused Job of sin. Job does not even answer Eliphaz in when he first accuses him. But in this passage, he kind of addresses or responds to Eliphaz. Well, he says, I, 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 I go forward. But he, but he is not there and backwards, but I cannot perceive him. In other words, when you look at it, it means always forward mean going east. And back, backwards here mean going west. But Job said, when I go to the west, I cannot see him. He's not there. I cannot find him. And when I go, my sisters and brothers, to the west, guess what? I still can't perceive him. I, I cannot find him. And then he says, on the left hand. That means in the, when he, that means in the north. He says, when I look in the north, I do not find him. But, and, but he notice, he says, on the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. And then he says, not only in the north, but when I look on the right hand, he's in the south, I still cannot see him. But then Job says, God know where I am. In other words, I can't see God, but God can see me. Isn't it good to know even when you can't see God, God see you. Well, my sisters and brothers, if you look at it, he says, because God is watching me. Eliphaz, I want you to know that when I have been tried, I'll come forth as gold. In other words, my sisters and brothers, I want you to know that God sometimes uses a, uses a furnace of affliction for his people. And mind me, when he puts his people in the furnace, you can always understand, my sisters and brothers, that his eye is always on the clock. And his hand is always on the thermostat. He knows just how much and how long you can stand. That's the God we serve. And mind me now, you need to know, note that Job was already in line with God when he went in the furnace of affliction. But I need to tell you something because you may think I'm just saying the furnace of affliction. But God tests us in the furnace of affliction. You know, when I looked at Isaiah the other day, Isaiah said, he, he said to, the, to, to in the 10th verse of the 48th chapter, Isaiah said to them that he has tried them in the furnace of affliction. He says, I try, he said, but but though not as civil. He said, but I tested you in the furnace of affliction. And I want you to know every now and then God will test us in the furnace of affliction. And mind me, when Job went in this furnace, he was already in line with God. And while he was in the furnace, mind me now. He's basically said, in response to Eliphaz, he said that I've already been in, in the word of God. In other words, 
God is the guideline and the path that got, he's the, his word is what guides me in the life or in the path of life. And then in that 12th verse, he says that you need to know that his word is more is my nourishment because it's more important than my daily bread. I wish I had somebody that know when it get hard when you're in the furnace of affliction. That God knows where you are. Even when you don't know where God is. But if I were you, I, 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 my greatest desire is to know the Lord. I wonder, is there anybody up in this house that want to know the Lord? Well, he's good to know. Now, in my quest to know more about God, I, dis I continue to discover how little I do know about him. And you know, sometimes his actions, his attitude, his attributes, and his awesomeness are mystifying, mesmerizing, and just plain old mind boggling. Yes, Second, the First Corinthians chapter two, verse twenty-six raises the question: Who hath known the mind of God? And then, O oh Moses, he 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 makes matters worse for me in Deuteronomy twenty-nine and twenty-nine when he said, "There are some secret things." that belong it only to God. Then God says through the lips and the lungs of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55, eight through nine, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are our ways his ways. For as high as, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. Well, this declaration by Isaiah is somewhat problematic for me. What do you mean, Reverend? It's problematic because one thing I desire is to know more about my God. And I, you know, I really want to know him for myself. Not what somebody said. I want to know him for myself. Is there anybody in here want to know the Lord for yourself? And yet, as I prayed and pondered this thought, I said to myself, maybe. The reason we find it so difficult to understand the thoughts and ways of God is because God is a spirit. But we are yet carnal and fleshly. And just maybe. That's why the songwriter penned the word we'll understand better by and by and by all indications my sisters and brothers God doesn't want us to know everything about him because the last time I checked God is past finding out is there anybody can agree with me well my sisters and brothers it's in the mind of God, my sisters and brothers, that he, we, if we knew everything God knows, we, he wouldn't be God. We wouldn't need God. Now, mind me now, mind me. When Moses requested to see God face to face, in other words, when he requested to see the front side of God, God said to Moses, I can't show you my front side. Moses, if I 
show you my front side, I'll have to kill you. Because no man can stand and look on God face to face and live. And you know the gospel writer John recalled that no man has seen God face to face. And all I'm trying to tell you, even in this crisis, when we have not seen God face to face, God see you. Can I get a witness here? My sisters and brothers, God conceals his front side from humanity. But his backside, sometimes God will reveal. Well, Moses, listen, come here, Moses. What did God tell you? He told me, Moses, you can't handle all of my glory. So I tell you what to do, Moses. You get behind the rock in the cliff. And when I pass by, I allow you to catch a glimpse of my glory. Well, 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 maybe, just maybe. That's the reason he sometimes reveals his backside. Because his backside represents guidance. His backside to us represents leadership. And it represents our fellowship. I wish I had somebody that want to follow God. I, you can't get ahead of him. You don't walk beside him, but you follow God. Do I have some God followers in the house and in the Facebook and YouTube land? Well, uh, my sisters and brothers, his front side, he conceals. Stay with me, but his back side, he reveals. But the most well-known part of God is his right side. Is there anybody can agree with me? It is God's right side that is the side of power and authority. God said to the children of Israel, I will uphold thee with my right hand. The psalmist even waded in and declared in the 20th chapter and the 6th verse that the saving strength of God is in his right hand. Has there, is there anybody ever say, ever experienced the right hand of God? I experienced it because when I was on my way to hell, he reached down, picked me up, and turned me around and set my feet on solid ground. I wish I had somebody. Mind me now, I'm going somewhere there. But listen, my sisters and brothers, you need to know that Jeremiah wept with tears when he felt that God had redrawn or withdrawn his right hand from him. It is said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 that Jesus is now sitting. This is after he rose from the dead. He's now sitting on the right side of God in heaven. Because the right side of God is power and authority. Kyle, if you don't agree with me, I'm still going to say it. Now the scripture, the scripture, I want you to get this, have a lot to say about the right side of God. In fact, for a long time, a long time, while I was young and a child and a teenager, I thought that God had only one arm. But what do you mean, Reverend? Because no one ever mentioned all the God having a left side. I wish I had somebody. No Sunday school teacher ever taught me or told me that God had a left side. I have never heard a sermon preach about God's left side. And I do not recall all the years and, and debates and dialogues of discussion concerning God's left side. While I was in seminary, we never talked about God's left side. Is, is God once again withholding something from us? I wish I had somebody. If his front 
outside is concealed. His backside is revealed. God's right side is the side of power and authority which makes it the real deal. I do not know about you. But not knowing anything about God's left side leave me left me unfulfilled. Because my desire is to know more about God for myself. And yet in my quest I know more. To know more about God I had to consider the fact that I knew nothing about the left side of God. Church, it left me unfulfilled. Until I stumble across the powerful passage of scripture tucked away in this 23rd chapter of Job. Before I go any further with our text, let me introduce Job. Well, he's a family man with fortune, fame, faith, and friends. He had a large family. He had seven sons and three girls, or daughters. He had silver and servants, cattle and land. He was, he was respected and revered in his community. He was a man of faith. For the Bible said he feared God and ensued evil. But Job knew something about God's left side. Well, I'm not through with that. I'll get back there just a moment. But God himself. Say, listen, my sisters and brothers, God himself said this about Job. And Satan walked up among the sons of God. He asked him, have you tried my, say, sorry, my servant Job? For, and listen what God said. Job said, God said, Job was a perfect and an upright man. And somebody in here knows that when you've got all of that going for you, when you've got plenty of money and children are all looking good, you're respected and reverent, got everything a man could want. Guess what? Somebody in here can agree with me in here that you are bound to attract lots of friends. Well, what do you mean? Because everybody loves to latch on to what is called success. Yes, my sisters and brothers, a lady once said one time, I didn't realize how many kinfolk and friends I had until I hit the lottery big. Well, I, I, I want you to know, do you not know that when you get something, somebody become your cousin? They become your friend. They knew my good old buddy. I loved you a long time. Well, my sisters and brothers, isn't it amazing how fame, fortune, and faith have a strange way of attracting friends? But let the bottom fall out. My sisters and brothers, let the cash stop flowing and see what God's so-called friends disappear. Well, maybe I, I think I'm the only one in here that when, 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 when you go to talking about God, friends go to disappearing. When you get saved, sanctified, and filled with his precious Holy Ghost, now you're not the same person you used to be in their eyesight before you were saved. I don't know what happened to them, but I just found the way. And when I found the way, I found God, but they didn't want God. But my sisters and brothers, let the bottom fall out, and your friends will disappear. Well, I've discovered in my lifetime, down through my experiences, I have discovered that my sisters and brothers, that it is usually when the bottom fall out, people spread out. When your life goes from riches to rags, from royalty to ruin. It's hard to find a real friend. Bobby Womack said it best. Nobody wants you when you're down and out. That's what happened to Brother Job. 
Well, a conversation in heaven between Satan and the sovereign creator caused chaos, calamity, and confusion in Job's little corner of the world. I want you to know that is the unseen conversation. And mind me now, God has some unseen conversations. He has some unheard conversations. And every now and then, God puts you in the furnace because he's had a conversation. You don't know nothing about it. Job didn't know nothing about it. Job was in the furnace not because he sinned, but because God had an unheard and an unseen conversation. Look who he had the conversation with. He had it with Satan. I don't know why I'm still trying to find some stuff out about God. But I know he's past finding out. Think about it now. God, the Bible tells us that God can't stand to look on sin. But yet here was Satan standing right in the presence of God. It causes me to wonder, but I'm still looking. I'm still searching. Well, there was sin in the epitome standing before God. And God asked him, have you tried my servant? He's perfect. And mind me, my sisters and brothers, I want you to know when your world is turned upside down, it does not mean that God has seen sin in your life. Every now and then God just he looks at you and says, yeah, you okay. But you ain't where I want you to be. So he puts you in the furnace. And he turns up the thermostat. And sometimes you wonder why he won't turn it down. Because God is like Job said. I know he's looking at me. I know he knows the way I'm going. So when I come out, I'll be like pure gold. God can't see his reflection in you. So he turns the thermostat up. But he's still looking at the clock. Can I get a witness in the house? Well, my sisters and brothers, first Job began to experience funerals in his family. And one day, Job dug 10 graves, signed 10 death certificates with the same pen in the same day. Well, then his financial future, Job was a wealthy man. But his financial future start looking funny. Well, what do you mean, Reverend? All of his cattle and all of his oxen, his camel and his sheep, his servants and his civil began to disappear. Job uh, financial poor, Job's financial portfolio began to look like a sick man on his EKG. I wish I had somebody. Well, Job is now suffering with sickness. His body is full of boils. His hair is falling out. His facial features are frail. He's weak, wounded, and weary. Well, and Job doesn't quite understand why all of this is happening to him. Has there anybody ever been in that situation? I have, but I want you to know my God is a deliverer. Well, Job was sitting there wondering. He didn't do anything wrong to deserve this. He tried to live a right and righteous life. He paid his tithes and his taxes. Worship God and gave him glory on a daily basis. So now Job is asking, why are all these things happening to me? Before you go critical on Job, before you start pointing fingers, before you become Mr. Miss Righteous, uh, beware. It's also easy for you and me to ask God the same question. Why God? I wish I had somebody. 
Well, when there is no reasonable explanation for your ruins, you begin to wonder when you try to live right. Treat everybody right, done the best you can. When you follow, when you follow all the rules and still your life come to ruin. According to verse 8, I, I told you I'd come back. Job says, behold, I go forward, but he's not there. Backwards, but I cannot perceive him. Then in other words, he means my sisters and brothers, either with or without understanding I cannot perceive God I don't understand why he's not to my east I don't understand why he's not to my west I don't understand why I can't find him in the north or the south because the Bible declares that God is everywhere at the same time well, uh, my sisters and brothers, even when we can't perceive him, we got to know that we need to trust him. Well, uh, my sisters and brothers, in other words, Job couldn't understand why God was allowing all of these things to happen in his life. And if that wasn't bad enough, Job had to deal with a foolish wife. Can I get a witness here? Job's wife come to him and say, why don't you just curse God and die? I don't know, but can I speculate here? Maybe she was after the insurance policy. And Job was holding up her prosperous life. Well, maybe she got tired of of attending to a sad, sickly, and stubborn man. I don't know, but I do know that the devil took everything Job had but his wife. Can I get a witness here? Job couldn't understand. Well, there have been some times in my own life when I didn't understand, and I asked God, why God? God, why are you allowing certain things to happen in my life? I couldn't perceive God's plan. But after reading the book of Job, I can see why we ask God why. Well, God, why can't I ever get ahead? God, why can't I find a husband or wife? God, why am I always the one that comes in last? God, why if I can't feel your presence, the least you ought to do is to show me your plan. Well, Lord, what lessons are you trying to teach me? What's up with all of these pains and problems that I'm going through? God, what's up with all these headaches, heartaches, uh, and stomach aches I'm having and back aches? Uh, the Lord have mercy. What's up with all these trials and tribulations? Uh, what's up with all the faults and failure that I'm encountering? God, can you tell me what's up with all the pearls and the persecution that I'm enduring? Well, if that's your predicament this morning, if I punch your coin, well, then Job is revealing to us that God is just working from his left side. I wish I had somebody. Job in the name there, Job has taken a retrospective look at his life and he comes to the conclusion that God had not left him. He was just working from his left side. I wish I had somebody. He says in the in that neighbor on the left hand where God doth work. Can I get a witness here? 
I can't see him, but he works on the left side. I won't say that God is left-handed, but I'll say he even-handed. I wish I had somebody up in the house this morning. Well, my sisters and brothers, I cannot behold him. Job said he hided himself on the right hand. I can't see him. And that is really where I've been trying to get to in this message. Because somebody in the house, somebody in Facebook land and YouTube land is going through something. But verse 10 tells us, but God knoweth the way that I take. And just maybe you feel that God has turned his back on you. You may be experiencing some pain and problems in your life. You may be going through some tough and trying times. You may be suffering the loss of a loved one, experiencing financial difficulty, being have been molested as a young child. You may be one who've been abandoned by those you thought were your friends, but God knows the way that you take. Can I get a witness in here that know that God has his eye on you? I think I ought to tell you, Job want us to know that God has neither left you nor has he forsaken you. God has neither turned his back nor has he forgotten you. He just might be, look at your name and say, neighbor, he just might be working from his left side in your life. Job is saying, you will know when God is working from his left side when your life is filled with a lot of complaints. Listen what Job said. He said, even today is my complaint bitter and my stroke is heavier than my groaning. In other words, Job had a lot of complaints about what he was going through because in his estimation, he hadn't done anything wrong. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever suffered through no fault of your own? Have you ever gone through some stuff? Even though you know that you've done nothing wrong, you've dotted every I, you've crossed every T, you've followed all the rules and regulations, and still, instead of a blessing, you find yourself bearing a burden. Well, it looks like the only thing that being poured out of is poverty and not prosperity. The truth is, like Job, you've got a lot of complaints because your present condition doesn't reflect the promises of God in your life. Not only did Job have a lot of complaints, but it looked like he had lost his connection with God. What do you mean in verse 2? Job said, oh, that I might find him. I will not present my case before him. In other words, Job said, I wish I knew where God was. Job raised the question that all of us at one time of another or another had, where is God? When I need him the most, well, where is he when all hell is breaking loose in my life? Where is he when the bottom has fallen out of my bucket? We ask, where is he when my children? Are facing 10 years to life in the prison. Where is he when the lock will not disappear and the doctor 
don't know what it is. Where is it when the prostate cancer won't go away? Where is God when I've lost my job? Where is it when my house has been foreclosed on? But like so many of us, Job felt disconnected from God during the times of his greatest despair. All Job wanted was to feel the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I can deal with my dilemmas and my disappointments and my despair so much better as long as I know that God is with me. Is there anybody know that God will be with you? As long as I can feel his presence every now and then, I can handle it a lot better. And I can deal with life a little bit better. And that's why I said, Lord, let your presence be with me every step of the way. Job said in verse 4, if I could just get to talk to God, then I would argue my case. I would fill my mouth with argument. In other words, Job was saying, I let God know a thing or two about my condition. But God responded to Job just like any good father would. He said, I want to ask you one question, Job. In other words, Job said, if I can just find God, I'll give him my case. And I want you to know that Job knew that if God had his case, God would declare him innocent. That's why he said, I'm not worried about man. I just want to find God. But as I said, God treated him like any good father would. He said, Job, I want to ask you one question. What question, Reverend? Where were you, Job? Where were you, Job? Where were you, Job? When I put the earth and the heaven in place? Where were you, Job? Lord, have mercy. Job, where were you? Job couldn't say nothing, but Job, Lord, have mercy. He began to call God. He is God. Began he said, where were you, Job? Where were you, Job? I can just imagine Job was wondering what's God up to. But God only asked that one question. But he asked it in multiple ways. What do you mean, Reverend? He said, where were you, Job? When I said, let that be light and there was light he said Job where were you when I ushered time to come forward and then declare the time that has been will be no more where were you Job when I took the cosmos out of chaos where were you Job when I laid the foundations of the earth. Where were you, Job? When I measured it out with the length and the breadth. Where were you, Job? When I stood on the platform of nothing and fastened it to the nowhere and made everything. Where were you, Job? When I laid the cornerstone in place. Where were you, Job? When I shut up the sea Like somebody closed the door Where were you, Job? When I made a garment out of the clouds And painted a rainbow in the sky Without using a step ladder Where were you, Job? When the morning 
shining star sing together and the sons of God shouted for joy I want to know where were you Job maybe that's the very reason why some of us have a hard time striking up a conversation with God because all we got to do is to complain and complain and argue and play but Job let us know that when God will stick up his left hand and say talk to my hand I ain't trying to hear all of that stuff because I'm busy working on my left side so you can experience the power of God from the right side can I get a witness here Job discovered in verse 5 that when he stopped arguing his case then he could anticipate God's comments then I would know the word which he would answer me and understand what he could say unto me all Job is trying to tell you and me when you stop griping when you stop complaining when your case when you cease to go critique and criticize when you stop all the pounding and crying then you'll understand that through all of your troubles and trials through all your tribulations through all your disappointment and despair through all the pain and the problem God was just working from his left side Job said on the left hand where he doth work somebody said why Newsom because God does some of his best work from his left side can I get a witness here notice what he said in verse 10 but he know it the way that I take when he has tried me I shall come forth as pure gold can I tell you that gold is not afraid of the fire because gold knows that the only thing the fire can do is make you pure and brighter is there anybody here wanna be pure? Just understand that you got to be tried. Job said testing times of God's method of determining how much we can take. That's why we can live with confidence because God will never put more on you than you are able to bear. Yes, Lord, on his left side, he tries us, but on his right side, he triumphs us. On his left side, he bends us, but on his right side, he blesses us. On his left side, he dips us in the furnace of affliction, but on his right side, he delivers us from all of our troubles. On his left side, he lowers us, but on his right side, he lifts us on his left side he stretches and strains us but on his right side he strengthens us and he saves us that's why Job could say though he slay me yet will I trust in him as if to say when I don't understand the heart I can always trust the hands of God. Is there anybody in the hands of God? Well, there is deliverance in the hands of God. There's security in the hands of God.
of God are you in the hands of God there's safety in the hands of God there's security in the hands of God there's peace love joy in the hands of God can I tell you there's power wonder working power in the hands of God there is a way out of no way in the hands of God that's why I can live with confidence because I know I know that when God get through working on his left side I shall come forth as pure gold and the only way pure gold can be refined is that it got to go through the furnace of affliction maybe that's why Paul said I glory in my afflictions because afflictions have a way of drawing us closer to God and developing us for his service I don't know but maybe that's what happened out down on Golgotha Hill maybe all God was doing in the life of Jesus on the cross was he was working on the left hand on the left side maybe that's why Jesus in his dying hour cried out into thine hand I commend my spirit because he understood that the best place to be is in the hand of God as I go to my seat be it right hand or left hand tell your neighbor neighbor you are always in good hands you know not all state now but when you're in the right hand or the left hand of God you are always in good hands in the hands of God is there anybody in the hands of God well can I tell you he's got the whole world in his hand he's got the brother and the sister in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got the sun and the rain in his hand he's got the moon and the stars in his hand he's got the wind and the clouds in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got the rivers and the mountains in his hand he's got the oceans and the seas in his hand he's got me in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got everybody in his hand he's got everybody everywhere in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand even in in this coronavirus era he got the whole world in his hand is there anybody know that you're in the hand of God if I don't ever see you anymore just know like my savior I told God in the thy hand I commend my spirit work on me work on me I don't know about you but I'm glad to be in the hands of God I want you to know that my God is a good God I know they say with all state we're in good hands but I want you to know you can have hands greater than all state you can be in the hands of God in this time Though we may not understand what God is doing, just remember 
we can trust him. Doesn't matter whether he's working from his left hand or delivering with his right hand. We are in good hands with God Almighty. God bless you. Maybe there is one this morning that's wondering that's worried that need to know for sure they are going to be alright well I'd like to make a recommendation I want to recommend God I want to recommend God in these times. If you are not saved, whether you be here at this location in Facebook land or YouTube land, I want to tell you God will take you in. He'll take you in His hands right now. All you have to do is confess your sin. Tell the Lord from the depths of your heart, I've been wrong, God, and I'm sorry for my sin. And from this moment on in my life, I commend myself into your hands. Lord, make me, mold me, Prepare me for your service. And Lord, I promise I will forever serve you. And I promise you that if you would confess your sins with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and now God has raised him from the dead and he sat down on the right hand of power. You can have everlasting life. Is there one? Is there one? In the hands of God. may be seated. glory hallelujah my sisters and brothers we are grateful to have you worship with us this morning in our worship service you that are on Facebook live and YouTube thank you for joining in and also we would love to ask that you share with others on next Sunday at 11 a.m. <clears throat> you can join in with us Amen. here at the same place Amen. where we will worship God. Amen. Where we will do our best yes. to impact the world for the good of God. Yes. My sisters and brothers, we love you. Yes. We pray for you. And certainly in this unprecedented time, Amen. we have a God oh, yeah. who is up to the challenge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If our God yes. could take and shield the Israelites mm -hmm. from the death angel yes, who was yes. behind the blood yes, of a lamb, yes. certainly he can take and protect you during this time of coronavirus. That's why I plead the blood of Jesus. Because as the songwriter said, it shall never, 
lose its power. God bless you. God keep you. Goodbye. We'll see you next week. God bless you.